Hello again, Fleet Commanders. Tiberius here, back with another edition of my 2022 New Player Tutorial Series. Uh, this is part two, part D, of our Op 16 to 20 segment. Uh, we talked a little bit the last time in the previous video about the different officers and buildings that'll sort of open up and become more available to you in the Ops 16 to 20 range. <clears throat> Excuse me. Today we're going to talk a little more about the ships and how they sort of come out and the different events that will also happen as well in this level range. Uh, so let's start with the ships and dive right in. We'll show you some examples of this stuff. So shipyard level. So this is 14. You got the Tala, so you had your basic Findra, Turus, Tala. Maybe you got the jellyfish, whether you purchased it for... I think it's 50 bucks in the store. Uh, then in which case you would have skipped the Taras. Um, but now as you move into the higher levels, it's not quite... Uh, you get into a little bit more of the specialized ships. So you start at 16 with the Envoy, which is a much, much better mining ship than what you had been using with the Fortunate. The Fortunate's slow, has a limited cargo capacity, and a very low mining speed. The Envoy, much better. Take a look at my envoy here. We're talking about 160,000, you know, much higher cargo capacity. Um, you know, this is on a G3 mining node. It does have the right officers on it, mining about 4,000 an hour as compared to... Sorry about this, I should have had this done already. Uh, a much slower mining ship. Again, doesn't have the right officers on it, uh, but just, you know, a very basic, fortunate 600 an hour. Uh, obviously, if you upgrade this ship and have the right mining officers on it, uh, it's probably going to end up being about half what this ship would be. So 4,000 an hour versus about 2,000 an hour. Greatly improves your mining capacity. Also has much higher protected cargo, so you can stay out in the field longer uh, on your mining nodes. You'll start to get into the daily missions and things that will require you to mine three-star materials, uh, which you'll also need for buildings and research as you get to 20. Uh, your refinery will also let you start refining three-star materials at Ops level 20, uh, but it is a very basic, limited. Uh, it's you know, about 1750. It's only a one pull, so it does kind of slow things down. Just sort of an introduction uh, to the three-star economy that you're going to be in for a very long time. Uh, the three-star economy runs all the way from the 20s uh, to 39. It isn't until Ops 40 that you start using four-star materials uh, for buildings and research and upgrades and things like that. So you're going to be in the three-star world for, for quite some time. The next ship that's available to you is our first specialty ship, the USS Franklin. The Franklin's really only purpose is killing swarms. See, it has a huge, its ship bonus is a huge bonus uh, against swarm ships. And it punches way above its weight class because of this, which is important because as you really level up, um, you move very quickly. If you look at our, let's go look at my dailies at Ops 20. Your swarm dailies improve drastically. So now my swarm dailies are to kill, you still have the generic one to kill level 15s. You got to kill 50 of those. But your higher level additional swarms, the ones that pay out the higher amounts of resources, these biominerals that you can convert to par steel and tritanium and things. Uh, you're killing, you know, 18s and 20s, and then 19s. Uh, I'm sorry, 18s and 19s, then 19s and 20s, and then it's 20 and 22 that you have to kill here. And if you don't have the Franklin, you're not going to be able to do. It. You basically you you won't be able to do it. It's really, the, the short and simple of it. Um, you know, level 19 swarms. 65,000 strength. Level 20 swarms. These are 75,000. And the 22s, these are probably close to 100,000. hundred and fifteen, hundred and fourteen thousand. You will not be able to kill them with the jellyfish. You will not be able to kill them with the Taras. So your options really are 
the Franklin, or you're going to have to basically skip those for a while until you get a you know a better ship in the 20s to do it. Uh, they're just too big. They're too powerful. You're going to be skipping those events for a while, and um, you're also going to have an issue with some of the other events we're going to talk about in a little bit as well. So the Franklin is a, a key ship to get. It, there is a free-to-play path to it, which we'll talk about uh, through Cosmic Cleanup in, in the events in just a minute. Uh, the other option is to purchase it from the store when it is available for sale. Our third ship we'll talk about, the Botany Bay. This is acquired through a mission chain, essentially. Uh, you'll get a mission in your mid-teens. It'll start with you looking for John Harrison. John Harrison is uh, from the Star Trek Beyond movie. We later find out Harrison is actually Khan. Spoiler alert. Sorry, it's been 15 years if you haven't seen it yet. Oops. Ten years. Um, the Botany Bay is a specialty ship that is used for data mining. Data mining is completed in augment space, which is where it sends you. Um, you get 54 ship blueprints from the mission chain. The final six will be in your faction store for the augments. You'll have an option here to purchase uh, the remaining six blueprints. Then you can build the Botany Bay. That will then unlock this path into augment space. This is locked, much like these are sort of locked out. Uh, this path here from Rigel will be locked until you build the Botany Bay and complete that. That'll open up a whole new faction store in more detail to you, and you'll start being able to gain reputation. Reputation will also let you start getting different augment officers, all part of Khan's crew. These are some basic shards. These are one-time pulls, uh, but there are also chests in here that will increase the officer pool as your faction increases the number of off you know the quality of the officers in here people like Marla and Jochum uh, will get added to here and eventually Khan will get added to here as well when your reputation is high enough uh, these three particular officers Joaquin here is used for data mining he also adds the protected cargo of a ship as his captain's ability uh, so it gives you a second mining crew boosting protected cargo he can get synergy from these other two officers to make that even higher it's his officer ability that's also used for protected cargo, uh, for, for data mining. So if you put him on, you know, with other mining officers uh, that maybe also boost protected cargo, like the Ferengi, um, you could put him as a just a basic officer on the side if you happen to have any of them from the various events or event stores. The Botany Bay is a bit level locked in terms of how you'll be able to level it up. It's controlled through common plutonium, which they really only give you very, very low quantities of until you get to Ops 20. And then this sort of changes and increases. It's basically like a week cooldown for, I think it's like one or five or something really low that you can get uh, in the beginning. Uh, but once you hit Ops 20, this changes. And you can start getting a lot more of these, so you can start tearing up your Botany Bay a little bit until you get to the point where now you need Uncommon Plutonium, which is level locked at level 24, and again, you get like one a week. Um, it says it's a month cooldown, but it tends to reset after a week, so I don't know why they do it like this. I don't know if it's intended to only be a week and it's displayed wrong, or if it's supposed to be a month, but it resets sooner than it's supposed to. I don't know which way it's supposed to be, but from what I've seen, it basically resets on a weekly basis. In order to get the credits and things that you'll need to do the store, you'll have to do the data mining. You'll have There's two types of data. You've got the corrupted data, which are the red nodes. This is a lot slower. And then you've got the green nodes, which are a little further into augment space. They'll require you to do a number of missions first before you can unlock those flight paths. Um, and then this will give you the green data, the decoded, which mines at a much faster rate. Just to give you an example real quick. So say we could get to here. In the beginning, you start doing the first couple missions. It's going to be a little tedious because these nodes only have 25 per node. That's it. They reset every 25. 
takes 14, 15 seconds, gets down to about 8 or 9 seconds if you have Joaquin and a, uh, as the captain or as an officer on the Botany Bay. He'll cut this down significantly for you. Uh, so you'll be just be moving, you know, every 10 seconds you'll basically be hopping around different nodes. Uh, you need about 1,500 a day. So it's going to take be a little tedious in the beginning. Once you get some more of the missions unlocked, you get into some of these deeper systems uh, where there are much larger nodes. I think this one goes up to 4,000. Yep. Um, and again, it's 2,500 right now. With Joaquin as captain, you get about 4,000 an hour. So you can kind of set it and forget it a little bit better there. But the uh, green data here, the decoded data, uh, you know, these nodes here, looks like they're about 750 but they mine 100,000 an hour, so you get much more of it, much faster. I think it's the same in this system as well. Uh, but there are some missions you do have to do to complete this path. Probably going to require you know, killing some bosses that are 50,000, 60,000 strength to do it, uh, which may require you to do a couple of double taps. So... It's definitely worth doing. I know it's a tedious and grinding process, but getting access to these officers definitely have some, some benefits. And kind of having this daily recruit chest to continue to get these daily pulls, these officers have much higher stats than a lot of the regular officers, making them great for lower deck slots or for away team missions. Um, a number of them also have some pretty strong abilities in terms of base cracking which is something else that you're going to start doing a little bit more of, stealing resources from other players. Uh, so this whole little faction store is going to unlock and open that up for you. Um, you know, you see Katie, hers is attacking, you know, reduces or does more crit critical hits against defense platforms. She increases your critical hit damage, some of this other stuff, until eventually you get to the rest of the con crew. Uh, Jochum here increases your mitigation so you take less damage he also decreases their weapon damage so you're taking less back and eventually when you get to Khan who's the guy that you really want um, he drastically drops their mitigation of all their ships and defense platforms for the first two rounds uh, it's a 50% chance, but with Synergy, it gets up to 100. So basically, their mitigation goes in the toilet, so a lot of your damage goes right through, giving you a better chance to destroy stuff and take them out. Uh, it does take a little while to unlock him. So again, and you are limited in terms of the reputation that you can gain here, because you can only gain it through these little refines. One of them, this one costs red data, this one costs green data, so you will need both in order to get that, but kind of limited at 2400 a day, and to continue to move up you need tens of thousands of it, so it will take weeks for you to keep moving through these particular factions, or levels of this faction. So best to start early, that's kind of what I'm saying there. <laughs> start it when you can. The fourth ship we'll talk about is an interesting one. The North Star. It's billed as a mining ship. It is, you get 18 blueprints through missions for it, but the remaining blueprints can only be acquired either through purchasing it in the store. Um, you can buy the whole thing for 20 bucks. Right there. They label it the fastest G3 miner. Which is true. It is a very fast mining ship, but you will almost never use it for mining. Uh, the other way to get it is occasionally, every couple of months, we get one of these event stores, and the ship blueprints for it will sometimes show up there, which is where they currently are in this month of May. Probably won't see another event store until maybe September-ish, September, October. Uh, so if you don't get it now, or aren't able to get it now, or are watching this video after this point in time, um, you know, it's something to plan ahead for, where you'll be, uh, when the next event store comes around, it's usually not very expensive to get the blueprints that you need. It's usually pretty pretty cheap compared to other things. Uh, or you can purchase it for 20 bucks, which is relatively low compared to what they charge for a lot of the other ships. 
you know, the jellyfish, I think they charge 50 bucks for, for the baby jellyfish, but the North Star is only 20 so. The North Star, very rarely used for mining. Look at the attack and defense on it. This is only Tier 3. I'm already up to 62,000 compared to my Tier 2 ships. My Taras, my Tala, these are only in the mid 30s, 35, 36,000, depending on you know what officers. Maybe I get it to 38 uh, with my strongest officers on it. This ship at tier three is already 62,000, and the attack on it is already significantly higher, and the hull health on it as well. Um, the downside to the North Star, as an attack ship, is that it does not get any type of uh, can't think of the word. The combat triangle. It doesn't get any type of, of bonus from the combat triangle because uh, you're a mining ship, so you have no no advantages. You also have no weaknesses. You're kind of hitting everything on a level playing field. Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. It, it kind of depends on what you're attacking and, and whether you're, you're punching up or not, you know, or down. But this ship will carry you pretty decently through the beginning of the G3 economy and will have a great value to you into the mid-20s. You can see the cargo capacity is incredibly low, only 4,500 compared to the Botany Bay is 54,000, the Envoy is, is 150,000. Um, so definitely not used for mining, because <laughs> you'll just be making trips back and forth every 30 or 40 seconds because your cargo is going to be full. But what you really will use it for is combat. Just to give you an example, we're camped out right here. Here's a level 26, 62,000 Federation Trader. Actually, we'll tack this 25 just to be... Here's 45,000 Federation Trader. I'm 62,000. This should go pretty easy for me. I'll take some shield damage, probably take a little bit of hull damage. But overall, it should be a pretty straightforward fight. A little bit of shield damage, a little bit of hull damage. Could probably kill eight to ten of those things per trip, which is good because I'm going to need those for my faction dailies because uh, they're going to go up as my reputation increases and I'm going to have to start killing 25s and 26s and things in this level range, which are significantly higher than those 35,000 strength ships I, I just showed you, your G2 ships. Definitely a good investment. Doesn't cost too much to get it up the first couple of tiers, and you'll certainly see a, uh, a big increase in power uh, there. If it's not available in an event store and you are not uh, going to purchase it, if you're trying to do it completely free to play, um, you're just going to skip this ship and you're going to have to move right on. The next ship you're going to have available is at not until level 20, which is the Kira. Um, this ship does scale up pretty well. Um, compared to the lower G2 level ships, compared to almost everything else above it, it's drastically inferior. Um, you know, it's a decent little stopgap to get you through the 20s to let you keep doing your regular dailies, your faction dailies. Doesn't have an advantage, you know, against swarms. Not really going to be all that great for that. You can get it up to, you know, 60, 80,000 uh, reasonably quick, which will let you kill a couple of mission bosses and things to keep moving forward. Uh, but I wouldn't invest too heavily in this ship because it does sort of have a, a pretty low ceiling. Um, and you're better off, you know, especially if you don't have a Franklin because you're stuck getting the blueprints for it for a while. Uh, you're better off sort of saving your resources and just sort of progressing and waiting until 22 and then investing a little more heavily in the Voclis. Uh, it's a good mid-level ship here. It is an explorer, so it does have the advantage against swarms as well. Um, and this can easily get into the two to 300,000 range when all is said and done. The other thing to keep in mind, if you do happen to pick up the North Star, a big chunk of its power will come from research. A number of those researches that you were wondering, why do they keep making me do these stupid little researches about making my survey ship have more firepower and more shields, like I'm never going to use my survey ship for attacking, it's for mining purposes. This is kind of why. I mean, the hull integrity one helps when other people are attacking you or, you know, killing you on your mining nodes. Uh, you can do some more damage to them. 
but your North Star will get a big benefit from having these increased as well. So take the time and do the research uh, for these. Your other research is back here, your piercing, targeting, and shield penetration. These also apply to all ships. Also good things uh, that your North Star will get a benefit from. I think that's it for ships. Those are the only ones that are really available to you in that range there. Uh, I did say we would talk about some events and things like that. Um, the daily missions that you get do change at Ops Level 16, and these will start paying you out uh, small amounts of two-star uncommon resources. And then as you level up and get closer to 20, they start paying you out a little bit better. And when you get to Ops Level 20, then they flip over and they start paying you out small levels of three-star resources, which is what you'll need to upgrade the North Star and the Kira uh, and things like that. And starting to do some more of the research and, and do your buildings and things as well. Uh, eventually, we'll start to need three-star resources a little further down the road. Um, I mentioned the refinery doesn't really give you a lot of those, so being able to get them through the events is also going to be a best way to source them. Uh, also do keep in mind that anything that is a common resource, you can convert Latinum for. Any two-star uh, resources here, or eventually three-star resources for some of those ships, the basic common ones that you need for doing ship upgrades, uh, you can convert Latinum uh, to get them as well. So if you're not having luck with the refineries, um, not getting what you need out of there or from the missions and you're a little short, you can still use Latinum for common resources only. Other things that will become available to you in your late teens, your Alliance tab will now start to get these Armada packs, which will require you, you to participate in Armadas of various levels and kill things to get these tokens. Uh, you just have to be part of the Armada. You don't have to live. So if a higher level players are sort of carrying you through it, uh, you will get small quantities of these because the amount of credits you get is based on the damage you do to the Armada target. And if you're dying pretty quickly, um, you're not really going to get any credits. Uh, but getting a few of them will eventually let you you know, you're going to need to get a few because you're going to need to get these Armada Tactical Cores, which is what you'll need to build your Armada Control Center at Ops 23, so then you can start running your own Armadas. Uh, so unless you want to buy these in the store, if you're the first player in your alliance or, uh, you know, on your server or whatnot, you might have to buy them. Um, but if you are an existing alliance, there are players above you just kind of, you know, hey, I need a star for an alliance so I can get some cores, so I can get my own uh, Armada Control Center built. And usually people are pretty good about that. They want to get you in so then you can start running them, so then they can participate in your Armadas without spending their directives. However, you know, if you look at the Uncommon Armada pack here, you get 50 guaranteed and then some lower levels here. And then from really, it's just some really basic resources and things and some low-level armada directives. Don't open these right now. Kind of hang back until you, these change based on your ops level. Um, you know, get some credits where you can, um, you know, but it's not until 23 that you're really going to need them. Uh, but, you know, if you happen to see an empty spot, jump in. You're not, like, you're not really going to hold people back, but you'll start accumulating small little bits here. And... Eventually, you know, these things will level up, a chance for speed ups, a little bit more of the resources and things from being in these armadas. The costs will also increase um, as the rewards increase. You see here, it's just some really basic blueprints uh, for the common ships. Again, as your ops level increases, the rewards in here, including the ship blueprints that are available, increases. Uh, until eventually in your 30s, you see things like the Enterprise and the, the D4 and the Augur. Those blueprints will become available. Uh, in the 30s. Same thing with the Epic Pack. Right now it's just, you know, a little bit of resources here. Oh, big chunks of resources here, which are actually pretty nice. Uh, and faction credits. And then you've got North Star Blueprints in this, but uh, getting into Epic Armadas is pretty tough. These are a little bit harder to, to kill. Um, 
And again, as you level up, the blueprints in here will change, uh, getting to the point where you're starting to get some much better ships are becoming available to you in there. So I would recommend if you happen to get any of these, hold off on them until you get to at least 22. Uh, start claiming maybe some of the smaller ones to get the tactical cores to start building your own armada center. Uh, but you're going to want to hold off on these for a while, uh, the higher level ones, until they actually get some, some good ship blueprints and stuff uh, in them and some higher amounts of resources. Looking at the calendar, talking about Battle Pass, a number of the Battle Pass events on the calendar, some of them say level 17 plus. Let's see if we can find any. Solo leaderboard 17 plus, 17 plus. Uh, when you hit Op 17, these missions that are like, you know, some of the ones that you have um, when there's level 20 plus milestones, either you don't get the mission or what you get instead is just to kill this basic thing number of them you will not get and you'll be kind of disappointed that you feel like you're being left out um, some of the other ones you know you'll do some of these level 10 pluses and you'll be fine with it and you're competing on the same footing with everybody else um, but a number of these including cosmic cleanup don't start until you hit level 17 if you move from 16 to 17 during an event it will unlock the additional event so if you were 16 and an event started, see if I can find one back here. That requires, I just saw one. We'll go back to the top because I know I saw one right there. Each day has a solo milestone, level 10 plus, and a solo leaderboard, 17 plus. So if you were 16, you got the solo milestone event, you're competing that, you move to 17, the additional event will unlock for you on that day. Um, and it may change your, your battle pass events and things like that. You might get double credits for that one day. Um, you might have to redo what you did and kill things over again. If uh, you know you hit the solo milestone and then you hit 17 and, and now it's like, well, great, now there's a leaderboard event. Now you're kind of starting from the bottom and now you got to go out and do extra kills. So uh, just become aware of that, that you might get additional missions and things for your battle pass. Uh, when you hit 17. The other thing that happens is we talked about Cosmic Cleanup. Cosmic Cleanup is an event that requires you to kill hostiles. It runs on Saturdays only during the event Battle Pass. So it runs three times a month currently. We're trying to push them to do it every Saturday. Hasn't happened yet. Excuse me. The rewards for Cosmic Cleanup give you special tokens. Basically, have to get two thousand, you know, whatever points, two thousand points, seventeen to nineteen, thirty-six hundred points in that twenty to twenty-one range. Um, but the rewards are still the same. You get the one thousand, or I'm sorry, one hundred epic galaxy tokens. Those galaxy tokens are converted in the store for ship blueprints. There are currently four ships available in that store. The USS Franklin, the USS Discovery, the Vidar, and the Sarcophagus are currently in that store. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, five, because I also did just add the Amalgam to that as well uh, in that store. It's going to take you ten conversions, ten pulls, ten cash-ins of these tokens to un get enough blueprints to unlock the ship. So since they only run it three times a month, you're three full months plus partway into the next month. And depending on how, when the event arc starts and things like that, it's basically three and a half months. So if you are a level 17 player and you do your first cosmic cleanup, where will you be three and a half months from now? You'll probably be in your low 20s, at which point you're just unlocking the Franklin. Okay, that's not great. Now I'm already past the discovery, which I can get at 21, so now I have to start working on that, you know. But I'm also climbing up on the Vidar, and you kind of get stuck in a little bit of no man's land. Um, so if you happen to see blueprints available in an event store, like we have currently for Franklin or for a discovery, it's probably a good idea to pick up 
some of the blueprints, at least for one of them, even if you don't do the full unlock, just to cut that window down, because you're looking at three and a half months to get the Franklin, then three and a half months to get the Discovery, then three and a half months to get the Vidar. You know, that's over ten months, almost a full year at that point. You're probably coming up close to about eleven months from when you got to 17. Not from when you started playing, from when you got to 17. So 11 months from there, almost a full year, how close to level 25 will you be? You'll probably be in your 30s by that point in time. Uh, we've seen a lot of players uh, be able to do that within one year, uh, getting into the low 30s, if not all the way to 34, and, and having a ship like the Enterprise and things like that. You don't want to be unlocking your Discovery and your Vidar when you're in your low 30s. You want them already having them, already working on the refineries. They take special materials that you have to can only get a limited amount of each day or each week um, through those specialty refineries so you want to start them as early as you can in order to level them up along the way so you're not stuck later on playing catch up and having those underpowered ships that uh, you know just don't quite get done what you need them to it's great that there's a free-to-play path for it but you're probably in order to stay on cur on a better curve going to need to pick up some blueprints for them where you can in an event store. Um, again, even if it's only part of the way to cut a few weeks off, if you cut a few weeks off the Franklin, then you can start saving the credits you get for the or start cashing them in for the Discovery or for the Vidar uh, a little earlier, and then you're working ahead instead of working from behind. Um, the other event that does show up is this Threat from Beyond event. There are two different types of threat from beyond. This starts at Ops 18. So you have the generic threat from beyond, which based on your level will reward you small amounts of two star and then just requires you to kill swarms, any swarms for the basic one. Uh, and then as you tier up or as you upgrade, now you're starting to get into uh, Three-star materials. This event runs every Sunday, affectionately called Swarm Sunday, um, and it will start to pay out more and more resources. And eventually, at some point, you know, you'll get officer blueprints, 28 to 29. Now you start getting Mara and Khan shards. Currently, um, so it's another way to start sourcing Khan a little bit when you get a little bit higher. The basic threat from beyond requires you to kill any swarm cluster one point apiece. Basically, you got to kill 75 of these things, uh, 60 in the lower levels, but very quickly by the time you get to 20, you're up to killing 75. The heroic one is the one that's a little bit more challenging. Uh, starts at 18, requires you to kill level 18 swarms, you get one point apiece for them. You need 100 points to do it. Uh, pretty challenging to do it that way, uh, but you can kill level 18 swarms with a 30, 35,000 strength Turos. Killing level 20 swarms, as we saw, these things are about 75,000 strength. You will not be able to kill them with a Turos, and you'll need to kill 10 of them. Maybe if you find one that's already been damaged by somebody, or maybe if you double tap one, but are you really going to do a double tap 11 times to get enough points to do this? Probably not. Uh, so that's, again, where having the Franklin certainly comes into play. It's not going to show me the higher level ones. When you move up to Ops 20, <coughs> excuse me, the rewards change a little bit. Now you start getting three-star resources, but now, again, much like your dailies have increased, so has what you need to kill for your swarms increases. We already looked at the 20s and the 22s. Uh, going to have a lot of trouble killing them. Maybe you can get a couple if you've got your North Star upgraded. Maybe you can get a couple of these, uh, but if you need 120 points, how many trips is that, killing 22s uh, or killing 20s? Again, for small amounts of resources, but as you uh, upgrade in this capacity, these are going to make me do them one at a time. <laughs> Getting larger amounts of resources there. And then eventually, again, 
24 to 25. Nope, still haven't gotten them yet. Probably 28 like the other ones. Uh, you'll also see more additional con shards available for you here. I'm going to guess it's going to start at 28 like the other event does. Yeah, 28 to 29. There you go. You start getting con shards paid out here at Ops 28. So um, you're going to want to and again, we got to kill the bigger swarms to do it. So this is where I'm talking about having your Franklin early and being able to do some of the upgrades to it, getting the frequency modulators, which are dropped off the swarms, or by doing your dailies. Uh, we'll start to let you to accumulate them so you can start upgrading that ship so you can stay ahead of things instead of falling behind uh, and missing out on things. That, that's it. That's the best advice I can give you for moving through 16 to 20. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I know I always enjoy making these. Uh, leave your comments down below, questions if you have anything that I didn't cover in either of these two parts. I'd be more than happy to answer them. Uh, also be sure to try and check out my live streams. I'm on Twitch four days a week, two nights and two mornings, Eastern Standard U.S. time. Uh, so, you know, maybe a night might be a morning for you, depending on part of the world you're in. Uh, but... You know, try to be flexible with my schedule a little bit, uh, working around my actual work schedule, so that way uh, I can provide some content for you guys. But uh, I enjoy doing these, and we'll continue to, to keep on doing them, and we'll see what happens as we move from 20 through 25. Probably take me a little bit longer before I get to that one. Um, you know, leveling up these buildings starts to take a lot longer, a lot bigger chunks of resources. But uh, hopefully I've gotten you off to a good start, moved you from 1 to 20. I did it in a month. That's a little faster than most people would prefer to go. It does take you a little while to get caught up on some research uh, and things like that. But realistically, going from 1 to 20 in less than three months is probably a very good uh, goal, a very realistic goal to attain. Um, and if you happen to be somebody who spends, you know, 20 bucks a month on like a battle pass or things like that, you can certainly uh, accelerate your, your growth as well. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I look forward to seeing you around the galaxy.